What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out the upgraded version of Conform Object, the add-on for Blender that lets you bend objects along surfaces. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we've talked about Conform Object before. It's basically a tool that's designed to help you bend objects along other surfaces in Blender. And um, it's been very popular. It's something that a lot of people have liked, I think. Um, it's a tool that I really like as well. Um, and I wanted to talk about this specifically because it's been upgraded with a feature that makes it even better. We now have the ability not only to bend objects along surfaces like we'd done in the past, but we also have the ability now to use a lattice to kind of like fine tune the way that this works. So I will link to conform object on this page. Um, he's also got a couple videos in here um, talking about this. So there's a lattice deformation video on this front page that you can watch. But let's jump over into Blender and take a look at the way that it works. And I'm just gonna do something similar to what he's done in his video. But basically, this is just a surface that I've created using the add-on random flow. It's just some kind of like randomly extruded boxes that are in here. And what we wanna do is we wanna take this box and we wanna bend it along the top of this model. And so you wanna make sure that you've installed conform object so you just wanna make sure that you've installed the zip file that comes along with this. But then what you're gonna do is you're gonna have the ability to select a target object, or I guess this is the object you want bent and this is the target object, but you can right click and under conform object, select the option for conform object, right? And up to this point, this is pretty much similar to what we've looked at before, right? It's gonna take this object and it's going to bend it along the surface. But that can be a little bit problematic because what's happening in here is it's taking this object, it's bending it along the surface, but the object is bigger than um, the surface that we're bending it along, which um, is not necessarily ideal. So what we can do now though, that we didn't really have the option to do before, we did have the option to kind of like scale this down, but now, we have an option in here under deformation grid to add a lattice that allows us to adjust the way that this goes on the object. So the way this works is if you look in here, this doesn't actually look like a button, so it can be a little bit confusing. Um, but what you wanna do is you wanna click on the option right here to create a lattice. Notice how when you do that, it kind of like fills this in in here. Well, when it creates a lattice, what it's gonna do is it's gonna create a grid that you can use in order to adjust your object. Now, to, one thing to note is you can go into this deformation grid option right here and you can set the number of subdivisions in this lattice, right? So if you want this to be a little bit simpler, you can remove some of these, you can add some of these, you can kind of do whatever you want with that. But once you've done that, what you can do is you can select the lattice and tab into edit mode and notice how you can adjust this lattice and it's going to adjust the way that this object is placed on this surface, which is a massive, massive improvement to the way that you had to do things before. It makes your life significantly easier, right? So notice how if I move these out or in, I'm gonna get different results based on that lattice location. And so we could come in here and we could just really quickly fix the way that this is sitting on this surface just by moving these in or out. And you could also take it and move like multiple points if you wanted to do that. You know, if I was to move these out this way, for example, what I might wanna do is move them out, but then kind of like scale them inward so that this fits on the surface. But notice how this makes placing this object on your surface substantially easier than it was before. So this is also going to work um, you, you don't have to do this in just a downward direction. So notice how I've got this object right here that I wanna place on this uh, forehead. If I right click on it, go to conform object, notice how when you initially do this, it's going to try to do it in the Z direction and it's not gonna work very well. What you can do is you can come in here and you can adjust the direction either to automatic, nearest, or in this case, I just wanna do it in the X direction. So when I do it in the X direction, it's just going to shrink wrap this whole thing in this direction right here. And um, once you're kind of done with this, and one thing you might want to do in this case is add a little bit of a surface offset in here. Um, so maybe like 0 0.001 or something like that, just so that it's not like, like um, Z fighting with the surface right here. Notice how again, because I've created this lattice, I can come in here and I can start making adjustments, right? So I can move this lattice like out, in, other things like that. We could also take the whole thing, scale it down, 
and even like move it. And that's gonna kind of move the way that this sits on this surface. So this lattice gives you the ability to really quickly make these changes. And so let's take a look at another example over here. One thing that you might wanna think about doing when you're using conform object on things is before any conform object that you do, and this is something that I've created just using the array modifier, but before you actually place this in here, you might wanna add a, sub, a simple subdivision surface modifier. What that'll do is that'll just subdivide your object so that there's more control geometry in there for the add-on to use. But if I do a shift click, right click, do a conform object, it's going to do the same thing. Notice how I wanna make sure that I set either the automatic direction or whatever axis direction that I want. And so once you've created this, one thing about this is if you click off of it, that option is kind of like gone, right? Cause it's not built on geometry nodes or anything like that in the sense that you can come back in and edit it. So what you would need to do is just come in here and undo the conform object and then just conform it again. Not a massive deal, um, but just be aware that uh, once this menu goes away, it seems to be pretty much gone, um, but you can still come in here and you can adjust that lattice after the fact because it's creating the lattice in here, right? Well, I can go into the lattice settings over here and notice how there's options in here to adjust some things about that lattice. So that's kind of like live in here, meaning that you can change the number of divisions in here. You can also set, them, set some things like showing the lattice in front. There's other edit modes as well. So things like you can toggle if the source object is selectable or not. Note that that one can be a little bit weird. It took me a minute to figure out why I couldn't come in here and select this, but you can also set like surface snapping if you want these to snap. So if I move this, right, notice how it's snapping to the surface when I move it around in here. So you can use that in order to toggle that surface snapping on if you wanna do that. Um, and then you can also toggle those back off, right? So you can toggle off the surface snapping, other things like that. Now, one thing to note about this, it gets a little bit strange is notice how I can't see some of the control points that are in here, right? So I can't actually see them as points. Those get kind of like blocked by some of the geometry in your model. So just know that sometimes you may wanna come in here and select things from your grid and it feels like you're not actually actually selecting them, right? Because the geometry is blocking them. But notice how when I move this around, um, it is actually selecting that geometry. So sometimes that that um, that control geometry isn't visible um, based on your view and your scene. You could go to like wireframe mode and then they should show up okay. Um, but just know that this is blocking you being able to see those, but that doesn't mean it's blocking your ability to actually edit them like this. So um, that's something to be aware of as well. All right, so I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about this upgrade? I'm finding it much easier to use, but I'd love to hear what you think. So leave a comment down below. I will link to conform object on this page as well. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.